blood doping is undesirable for all parties of this debate. Affirmative, negative, audience, and judges. You're taking a small sample of performance-enhancing drugs, not giving the full information to the judges. We know that some performance-enhancing drugs are non-dangerous, like creatine, but the resolution focuses on every performance-enhancing drug, including the more popular life-endangering ones, like steroids. Any drug is harmful to the body, and limiting it to one hinders your argument and doesn't tell the full story of this debate. With our audience knowing that, please let me continue with why performance-enhancing drugs should not come close to being implemented in our sports. The, the drug race is, is short, has the potential to create a slow-motion public health catastrophe. Finally, we may lose whatever is most graceful, beautiful, and admirable about sport. This quote by Gary Waller, chairman of the World Anti-Doping Agency, represents the three things the negative want to stress about performance-enhancing drugs. Performance-enhancing drugs being legal for athletes will cause a trickle-down effect, eventually leading to performance-enhancing drugs reaching our high schools and college athletes. The competition between talent and sheer effort of sport will be undermined with the use of high-risk artificial supplements. And finally, the image of highly regarded athletes will fade from highly esteemed professionals who set unimaginable boundaries by their talent and effort to people who use a quick fix for competition. There is no substitute for good nutrition in a sensible strength program. None. No drug can fix that. Any performance enhancing drug, whether regulated or not, is not needed in any sport or the Olympics. The negative side effects of performance enhancing drugs such as stimulants, steroids, testosterone enhancers, human growth hormones, EPO, and many others are too risky for athletes to take and too risky for any self-respecting doctor to distribute for recreational use. These drugs are not intended for competition purposes. Steroids are intended as hormonal replacements and for a way to combat the wasting away of AIDS. Testosterone is used for men suffering from low T. HGH is for treating dwarfism. EPO is for combating renal failure. These are the most popular drugs in sports, as per USA Today. And as I just told you, they are not intended for professional sports and should not be now. Performance enhancing drugs may be enhancements, but for medical reasons, and medical reasons only. Not for our entertainment and athlete's sake of winning. Drugs purely used for competition carry far too many risks. The annual revenue made by, made by major sports leagues as is followed. National Football League, $9 billion. Major League Baseball, $7 billion. National Basketball Association, $3.8 billion. National Hockey League, $2.9 billion. And Major League Soccer, $280 million. The public opinion of performance-enhancing drugs are a clear indicator that annual revenue, which means the amount the sport makes each year, would fall due to reasons given by fans like lack of fairness and loss of integrity. On Research America, which is a website that takes public opinion polls from every state in America, it was found that only 32% liked the idea of steroids and other performance-enhancing drugs being used in major league sports, while 68% agree that they should be kept out. Clearly the fans see performance enhancing drugs as an issue, and since 80% of the revenue is from the sport is made by fans, the sport is obviously losing money by legalizing these drugs. In a debate, the benefits must outweigh the risks in order for there to be a need for change. The affirmative must argue a need for change. Are any of the benefits the affirmative gives you more important than risks of endangering lives? From the many health risks associated with more popular drugs like aggression, impaired judgment, cardiovascular problems, liver damage, imbalanced hormonal levels, mood swings, suicide, deterioration of muscles, and many more, all the way to the negative effects it has on many kids, views on their role models makes legalizing performance enhancing drugs undesirable.
The domino effect of these drugs reach our children who wonder if they can be like their favorite athletes if they use drugs. If the, if the best they can do means taking drugs to do so. Legalizing drugs with high risks with high risks for their role models means these life-threatening drugs will become more popular for teens and adolescents who also want a competitive edge. For these teens, these drugs can stunt their growth, feminize boys, masculate girls, and as with any drug, they're addictive. It's been noted by drugabuse.gov that research has found that constant consumption of drugs like steroids can experience withdrawal symptoms if they stop taking them, including insomnia, depression, fatigue, intense stimulant cravings, and suicide. Do we want our children to further feel as though they have to use something as damaging as drugs to be successful? We as the negative sure don't. That's why we don't think performance enhancing drugs should be legalized, but instead regulated much more. We propose a counter plan that would keep the fairness, competition, and love for the game all intact. Athletes will have to be blood tested one day every month for the full 12 months. That means all year round testing for every sport that simply in involves taking blood. Other methods of detection would be implemented too, like consistent urine samples and BMI testing. And if athletes get caught by somehow dodging these methods, they would receive harsh penalties like suspensions and heavy fines. The team would also receive a penalty for their actions, such as not, not being able to replace that player on the roster during a suspension and a team fine. That would leave athletes thinking first before they doped due to team penalties.